Hello, uh, I am, this is gonna be a quick video showing you how to use ChatGPT as a tutor. So this comes from here, let me uh, show it really quick. This article uh, from the Mollocks, Ethan and Lilac, uh, apologies for any mispronunciations, uh, on AI as personal tutor. So they have this uh, article as well as you know an article in uh, HBR, I think, on the roles, the use cases of AI as students. And I think this one is really cool. Uh, it's worth looking at the other ones, right? So that they have uh, AI as feedback generator, personal tutor, team coach, and learner. Um, and so this is as a personal tutor. Uh, so what, what you do uh, is go to ChatGPT. Uh, you likely know how to do that already, but uh, chat.openai.com, you'll have to sign up for an account. Uh, and then, so this is showing how to do it with a free account. You can do uh, this with GPTs, with uh, some of the cooler new things. Uh, you can do it through the API, but this works with a free account, um, which I know is important for a number of students. So go down to your, uh, your name, click on it, and click custom instructions. And then I will put, I had a, it's a little bit too long. So there's a, on this page, there is a um, suggested prompt. Uh, where is it? Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, text uh, of a suggested prompt here. Um, the place that that goes in the free version of ChatGPT is here. I had to shorten it some, um, and so I had to, so I will uh, copy and paste the one that I'm using here um, and uh, and add it to the into the description of this video so that you can copy and paste it. Um, in fact, I'll do that now. I'll just copy it so I remember. Uh, and but that's what that's what you'll have to do is put that in first. So you again in custom instructions. Oh, let me make this a bit bigger so that hopefully you can see it. Uh, click on your name, custom instructions, uh, and then down here. How would you like ChatGPT to respond? Uh, and then, so what this does, it basically tells ChatGPT to act as a tutor. It gives instructions for helping you to understand a concept. I mean, the key idea here, right, is that, that you need to choose concepts that uh, GPT knows about. Um, but if you have something that you know, it knows a lot about, then it works really well. So um, you know, I am teaching a, a networks class, and so if, one of my students wanted to know about a network concept. We can show how that might work. So uh, let's see, what is a good question? I looked at ego networks before. Um, let's look at, uh, okay, in social network analysis, how are edges formed? And then ChatGPT gives us, uh, because we've given specific, right, specific instructions, it says, I'm your AI tutor. Let me know what specific aspect of social network analysis you'd like to learn more about. Um, are you interested in understanding how edges are formed in the context of social networks? Yes, that is what I'm interested in. Understanding how edges are formed in social network analysis is crucial. What do you already know about how edges are formed in social networks? This will let me tailor my explanations to your existing knowledge. I know that edges represent relationships. Maybe we don't know very much. Right? Hopefully this is, I mean, I'll zoom in even a little bit more so you can hopefully read this as I'm doing it. Um, it says, you know, you're right. It can be, you know, entities can be individuals, organizations, etc. I now let's dive deeper. Relationships are often categorized in different types. Can you think of examples or types of relationships that might be represented? Um, friendship and love. Those might be two examples. Excellent examples. Okay, think about how these edges are formed in the context of friendship and love. Um, so it sort of guides you through questions. I mean, you can see when I chose something open-ended like this, like there may be things that as an instructor, I want a student to learn about, right? Like what are the theories about how uh, edges are formed? And this might be, you know, guiding students to just think about and think through it, right? Um, so, I mean, if you want as a student, you know, knowing that you're expected, uh, you might ask something like, what are some of the theories about why edges form? 
Uh, one prominent theory is social exchange theory. Perfect. Another interesting is homophily. That's great. It's like the same birds of a feather flock together. Considering these theories, can you think of situations or examples where exchange or homophily might play a role in the formation of edges in a social network? So we might say, uh, is my relationship with my boss an example of social exchange? So it says, yes, you contribute skills, time, and effort to the organization. In return, you receive a salary, career development opportunities, and other benefits. Your boss provides guidance, support, and resources, expecting a positive contribution from you. Now, considering your work environment, can you think of any specific instances where this reciprocal exchange is evident in your relationship with your boss? Um, they asked me to work on a weekend, um, and I said that I wanted uh, more time off in the summer. Something like that, right? Um, let's see. That's an example. Okay, so perfect. Um, right, and so so you can continue to have these sorts of conversations uh, with GBT, um, learning about something that that you don't yet know about uh, by, by telling it to be a tutor. It's really cool. Uh, you can learn about anything. And if you want to do uh, a new chat, right, just do a new chat. Like uh, maybe you want to, uh, you know, teach me about the central limit theorem, right? Whatever it is you want to learn about. Uh, I think for some of these, right, where there's sort of like a, a true answer, it's actually a little bit better than, than in the social sciences where, where I spend my time, where we sort of have lots of theories um, and, and it's less clear uh, what's true and what isn't. We sort of were trying to understand a really complex uh, system, but but things like uh, math or uh, or things like that, it's often really, really useful. Um, so we might just say, I don't, like, let's see how this works really quickly. Uh, the, here. I don't understand what it is. No. Don't know what a random variable is. So again, you can just sort of say, like, I don't know this, I don't know this, and the the tutor would provide you um, I, examples, analogies, right? And so it says, imagine you're conducting a survey find the average height of students in your college. Now the heights of individual students might follow different distributions, some tall, some short, et cetera. But if you were to take multiple random samples of say 30 students each and calculate the average height for each sample, the sample means will tend to follow a normal distribution. It allows us to make statistical inferences about the population mean, estimate how likely our sample mean is to be. Um, and so you might say that makes sense, or you might say, oh, I don't get it. Like what is the, you know, what's a sample mean? Uh, Etc. Right, and and that's the great thing about ChatGPT is it just does not get tired of answering your dumb questions. Right, uh, it will keep answering. You never have to feel dumb. Uh, you can you know kind of drill in on the pieces that you don't understand, uh, which I think is really cool. And and giving it a few prompts to help to help it to uh, to respond as you know as an enthusiastic, helpful tutor uh, can be really helpful. For learning things so uh, hopefully this was helpful I think it's really cool really exciting this is yet another example of, uh, of cool ways that uh, that AI and LLMs are you know have the opportunity and the potential to really help us to uh, to learn uh, things quicker 